Hello everybody, my name is Mr. E and today we're going to be talking about the CFMEU protests or rallies that happened yesterday in Sydney and Melbourne where thousands of people rocked up to show their support for the CFMEU. So there were other unions there that were in solidarity with the CFMEU and basically they wanted to send the message to the government to say that people are angry that their union has been put under administration uh, based on, you know, a trial by the media. The media came out like a couple of months ago uh, with some damning stories um, and allegations about corruption and criminality within the CFMEU. Um, and that has basically led to the fact that the federal government has passed, you know, urgent legislation to bring the CFMEU under administration, which is, you know, the first time that something like this has really happened in Australia's working class history. It's got, it's a massive precedence uh, and it's got massive ramifications for basically the workers' struggle in this nation. So we're gonna just see what the media is saying about the events that um, took place yesterday. And I'm gonna fill you in on all of the details um, about what has changed since last time we spoke about this uh, from the last protest that happened like a couple of weeks ago. And I'll give you updates on um, how this has progressed and um, we'll you know, puncture holes in the media narrative as well, because, you know, that's really the thing that's framing the entire conversation at the moment. So let's see what the ABC has to say. From Tools today. down, fists and flags raised. A show of mass defiance for the second time in three weeks. Look at those numbers. Worksites mm. fell silent as almost 30,000 construction workers raised their voices and walked off the job in Melbourne and Sydney. Once again, protesting the government's forced administration of the CFMEU following allegations of corruption. See, I think that's important what she's pointed out there. She said facing allegations of corruption. Now, I was at the Sydney rally yesterday um, and a lot of the speakers that were, you know, um, talking in front of New South Wales Parliament House, which is, they started at Central Station, uh, Eddie Avenue, and walked through the city, uh, through past Hyde Park and onto Macquarie Street in front of New South Wales Parliament House. And a lot of them were speaking about the fact that they don't believe that there's any criminal undertakings um, that have happened in the union, um, in their union, and their case was really about the fact that they've been put under administration based on nothing, in their opinions. Now, she's pointed out here that these are allegations. Now, I would just like to make it very clear, because this conversation happens a lot kind of in my content at the moment, while, since I've been discussing this, but like people are like, oh, you know, they're obviously corrupt and they need to be cleaned out and all that sort of stuff. Okay, look, I'm not suggesting that there isn't criminal activity being undertaken within the CFMEU, um, or there's no links to bikey gangs and all that sort of stuff. What I am saying though, is these are allegations at this point. And for the government to rush through legislation in response to allegations, basically, yes, putting a private organization under administration is an incredibly dangerous moment for our democratic society. Not only is it attack on people's rights, okay, so their rights to associate freely, but it's also an attack on the institution of a democratic society. This is an organization that is run democratically by the members, for the members, and in a democratic society, you should be able to basically associate with whom you please and represent yourself politically in a way that protects your interests. What the government has done here by rushing through this legislation to put a union under administration, which they believe, you know, needs to be cleaned out, fine, has set up a situation now where any union now could technically be subjected to this. If someone alleges 
that they've done something wrong, they've been corrupt or they've got links to organized crime, they can be put under administration by the government. And like this is a labor government, all right? So a left wing government, arguable, but a left leaning government. Um, and imagine if a right wing government comes in. What do you think the coalition is going to do with this precedent that has been set? Like they will be able to use this now and say, well, look, this is going wrong in the whatever union. Let's put it under administration. And like they won't need much. They just need the media to, you know, whip something up into a frenzy and call it a scandal. And based on allegations, they can start shutting down unions. Now, there's some people out there, again, in much of my comment uh, content, I get these types of comments, but people are saying, oh, yeah, well, you know, all the unions should be under administration. They're all corrupt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But like, it doesn't stop here. And this is why this is an affront to a democratic society and people's rights, because if they can put unions, which are private organizations, under administration, they can do that to private businesses too. The business sector sector should be worried about this. I'll tell you though, they're not because, you know, it's very unlikely that, you know, a bourgeois political system would start putting, you know, businesses under administration, but the precedent is there and you can start putting private organizations of any type under administration if the government sees fit. Now, yesterday at the rally, I heard one of the speakers for the CFMEU say that this is a form of fascism. Well, you know, an attack on the union movement and, you know, coercive government measures to overtake private institutions for their gain and for the interests of big business is a form of fascism. It's what they did in Um, Italy and it's what they did in Nazi Germany so like there's it's not a big stretch to call it and label it as such now I'll get into exactly you know what it is that I think the government is doing with this but we'll, we'll continue just to see if there's any other nuggets of gold that come out of the ABC for now so yeah 100% I'm angry bloody oath Today, officials vowed to draw a line in the sand. It means that we're not going to let any employer use administration to take wages and conditions backwards. It was a show of solidarity between unions and four ousted leaders, Darren Greenfield in New South Wales On you, Darren! and John Secca in Victoria. Do you still support John Secca? Yeah, yeah, I do, 100%, every day of the week. There's a real mood of anger here today. Union officials say these members have had... See, there, this is... I think this is an actually an important point as well. I'll give it to you, ABC. You're doing not a bad job on this one. People are angry. And that was the, very much the sentiment yesterday. People are making it out like, um, oh, you know, they're corrupt and they're evil and they're this and that and they're riddled with all of these problems. And, like, everybody knows that this is just the reality on the ground. But a lot of people that are in this union feel absolutely gutted and they are upset and very concerned that a democratically organized institution that they are supposed to be owners of they take the ownership of um and direction and they 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 provide direction to it it can be just taken over so easily and like they feel like it is up to them as members to make the decisions to clean out their own unions. It's not a government decision. It's not something that should be taken out of their hands. They feel like this organization belongs to them. Well, and it does. And therefore it shouldn't be taken over again under flimsy pretexts. So like allegations at this point, This is a very slippery slope here. And people, yes, yesterday were very angry about what was going on. But the media doesn't really talk about that. And like the conversations that I see online about this is all just like, oh yeah, bring the union down. Like it's this kind of amorphous organization. No, this is a people's, a working people's organization. Not some big business that just flies in here to make profits and takes off again. Look at those people. They are real people on the streets and they are very upset about this. Had enough and today's enormous turnout puts politicians on notice. 
The government is standing firm, planning to meet with unions and businesses next month. The truth is, we need a major reset in Australia's construction industry, and we have a once-in-a-generation opportunity to do it. The CFMEU's administrator has responded to a report which found... Okay, so what that minister has said there, I think really hits the nail on the head for what's actually been happening since we first really found out about um, them being put under administration. Okay, so what the Labor government originally did, and I think this is really important to point out, okay, they rushed through legislation in Parliament in response to the the, basically the trial that happened by a media. So the media were just going absolutely ballistic, you know, making all of these claims about all this dirty dealings and bikey trades that go on in the CFMEU. And so in response to that, the federal government, the Labor government, um, rushed through some legislation to take control of the CFMEU because for them to not do that, would be political suicide. Now, point number one, that's my problem and why I am a revolutionary, okay? We can't use the existing political system to get wins on the board for the majority of people, for working people, because politicians or people that join political parties look out for their votes. That's all they care about, getting elected again. And so the Labour Party, which has Labour in the name, only cares about being re-elected and not being smashed in the polls next year when the election is called. So they need to appear tough on the CFMEU. And so they've rushed through some pretty draconian laws to try and make sure they're not slayed in the polls next year and in the media for not appearing tough enough on the criminal CFMEU. So we need to revolutionize the system because even if you have a workers party, workers party in government, it's not going to help working people. And this is what's on display here. But let me just say what Labor tried to do was quite clever. When they originally tried to pass the legislation, it got through the House and it went to the Senate and was blocked by the Greens. What they originally tried to do was they said, OK, let's put the CFMEU under administration because of this criminality. But they had clauses in there that allowed any institution, private organization within the construction industry, which also has found links to organized crime to also be put under administration, meaning any companies, any big business organizations that also have found to have had links to organized crime will also be put under administration. And guess what? The Greens blocked that bill. And it's not like if the Greens blocked that, then it was going to go through the coalition or the Liberals as if they were ever going to pass legislation that meant their friends in big business would have to be under scrutiny, just like a union in terms of links to organized crime. And so the lab Labor were trying to kill two birds with one stone here and actually clean up the entire construction industry from the perspective of the unions and from the companies in the construction industry as well. They were like, all right, if we have to do this, let's do it right. And guess what? They were blocked by the Greens and they were blocked by the coalition. That's why they had to then amend the bill and put it back through the Senate. And it only had framework in there about the unions. This is an incredible talking point because I haven't heard this talked about in the mainstream media at all. But, but, and like this minister just said, and what you hear on all these, you know, hard hitting journalist stories like 60 Minutes, when they get these experts in to talk about organized crime in the unions, you know what they keep saying over and over again? Yes, there is organized crime in the construction industry. They never single out the unions. If you go back and you listen to all these hard hitting journalist stories, 60 minute reports, all that type of stuff, they're experts that they keep getting in, ex-police commissioners and people that were investigating on royal commissions, all that type of stuff. They keep saying, what? 
the construction industry is riddled with corruption and organized crime. So what I'm saying in all of this, if they are serious, which they're not, if they are serious about cracking down on the CFMEU and the union movement because of its ties to organized crime, why are they not cracking down on the business sector, the people that develop in the construction industry? There is no construction without developers and big business. So like, why aren't they cleaning up that arm as well? million dollar question i'll leave it to you to answer that one so let's see what the abc is continuing to say here. and the union is still in a cycle of lawlessness and infiltrated by bikies in victoria new south wales and queensland those investigations will continue with coercive powers if needed and there'll be a new whistleblower service undo the new laws undo it take it away we don't need it we'll fix our union don't worry we'll fix it Cyan Balance, ABC News, mm. Melbourne. I think that's a good sentiment. Um, what they've, what that guy's picked up on there is that this is, and, and you know, fair enough for them. This is their union, and so they really think that they can fix this themselves. We don't need this legislation. I don't think they need this legislation unless it was going to go exactly how kind of labor had planned it in the beginning and it was going to shake up the entire construction industry which again is what those police commissioners were talking about those people that investigated things for the royal commission into the cfmu that previously had happened they were calling for the entire construction industry to be cleaned up but the bill that we got thanks to our lackluster and spineless political system which is implicating all of them not just labor which is the narrative that is coming out of the media at the moment oh you know everyone's turning their backs on labor now like kind of thing no everybody should be turning their backs on the entire political system because the coalition was never going to support an actual cleanup of the construction industry. And the Greens didn't either. And the Greens are out there acting like, you know, they're supporting the working man and they're rocking up to these rallies and um, they're rocking up to protests and speaking on behalf of the unions and stuff like that. But like, where were they when they were trying to push through legislation that actually was gonna clean things up? Nowhere, nowhere to be found. Now, the, the thing that I saw at the rally yesterday was an actual coming together, a bit of solidarity between unions that might not always see eye to eye and agree with each other on things, but they were coming together to protect themselves. This is, that minister was right with what he said. This is a once in a generation. This is potentially a once in, I don't know, uh, a once in a lifetime kind of opportunity here for them to clean up the actual construction industry, not just the union movement, but it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to really destroy the union movement. And that's why it's pretty disappointing what the federal government has done because they have given license now, yes, to anyone in the future, any government in the future to come in and take over unions on whatever scandal the media comes up with. So like someone could just accuse a union of doing something. And as long as the media whips it up into a storm, then they will take over a democratically organized and run institution of working people. It's a sad day. And they kept saying yesterday when I was at the rally and watching, they kept saying, we are going to fight this to the end. The CFMEU has taken this to the high court apparently. So they are really going to fight this through the law courts, but they said that's not going to be enough because I, I, I agree with this as a revolutionary. Um, but like, you know, how much faith do you have in the judicial system? You know, it's just another arm of government at the end of the day. And so like, I don't see them coming out and fighting for the rights of working people. And um, I, I don't have much confidence in that. And so they kept saying yesterday, the CFMEU talk, um, uh, speakers at the rally, that they're gonna continue to strike 
like this. They're going to continue to work off the job and rally um, and fight this legislation themselves because they have to rely on themselves to get rid of legislation like this. Something that really basically takes away from people's rights. And like I've said before, you know, the right to unionize, the right to associate, these are human rights. Like I know we don't have proper rights in this country, but like they are human rights under the UN Convention. So like, you know, there should be some respect for them. Like I know it's as far-fetched as it sounds actually, you know, entertaining and appreciating people's actual human rights. Um, because there's always violations against that in this country. But e these are serious matters and it doesn't stop here. This is just the precipice of what is potentially a much larger issue in crazy government control in a supposedly liberal and democratic society. So look, if you liked this video and you want more updates, you know, give it a like and subscribe for more. Um, we'll continue to look at this matter, then I'll try and explain things as they unfold. And remember, everyone, I am, you are, we are a mystery.